So I will okay. now I will show a time series data starting from 1972, 71 to 2016. The time series data with regard to n number of variables here. See the value of dollar in 1970-71, And 71-72 it increased to 7.4. This is the average value of US dollar in 70-71. 71-72 it increased to 7.4. And 72, 73, 7.6. And finally, in 2015, 16, the value of US dollar 65.4685. So the data has been collected at different points of time. Here, the time means the year. So this is the time series data. So it has its own features. From 70 to 71, I select the data up to 79, 80, 10-year data. When I use this 10-year data, definitely I may have a constant mean. In the next 10-year data, if I select, there is a mean variation. So, we don't have a constant mean in the time series data. Similarly, in 1970-71, the value of US dollar 7.5 decreased to 7.4 in 71-72. 72-73, increased to 7.67. And in 89-90, the value was increased to 16.64. So between two time points, there may be some variation. If the variation is high, which means there is heteroscedasticity. Heteroscedasticity. That means the time series data have no constant variation. As the time changing, there may be the possibility of change of the value of one variable, which shows that there is no constant variation in the time series data. Similarly, the first year value may be dependent on the second, sorry, the second year value may be dependent on the first year value. Again, the third year value may be dependent on the second year value. That means the data is not independent. There may be some correlation between these two values corresponding to the time. And such a correlation is called a serial correlation, otherwise called autocorrelation. So when you consider time series data, definitely we have you no know, constant mean, constant variation. At the same time, there is serial correlation or autocorrelation that exists in the time series. See, when we consider a particular variable numerically expressed at different points of time, and here this is a dependent variable, US dollar, value of US dollar for the last 47 years, and that value is influenced by time. Therefore, US dollar is the dependent variable and the time is the independent variable. And see the movement of this particular dependent variable in association with the time, the independent variable. It is better to observe a graph. Therefore, by using regression curve estimation, here, US dollar is the dependent variable and time is the independent variable. Value of US dollar from 1970 to 71 up to 2016. This is a dependent variable here, which is influenced by the change of time. Therefore, time is the dependent, independent variable. 
So what will happen? See, the curve generated by the system. This is an absurd value. Zero, 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 zero. This is the absurd value. That means from this point to this point, there is a constant variation. Supposed to have a constant mean. But from this point to this point, there is an increase in tendency. Up to this point. And again, there is a decrease in tendency and there is increasing. This is the observed value plot. But when we consider time as an independent variable, what will happen? Can there be a linear trend or quadratic trend or exponential movement? We just observe the R square and how much influence the time, the independent variable has against the dependent variable value of US dollar. See the linear function, the R square is 0.9222, quadratic function 0.932, exponential 0.926. And we should consider only the highest R square, which is given by the quadratic function. Here, you just observe the curve of quadratic function. Starting from this area, and it shows an upward trend up to here for over the last 47 years. Why we have highest R square, 0.932? The highest, highest R score is for the model to predict or forecast the future values. At the same time, the F value and the T value is also significant. But if a particular time series having no constant mean, no constant variation, and the value between two time points may be related. That means we have serial correlation or autocorrelation. There is a possibility of the highest R square. And the F value and the T value may be found significant. And the T ratio is also significant. At the same time, the T ratio will not give a T distribution. Why? Because these three elements included in the time series data, that is constant mean. No, if you don't have a constant mean and we don't have a constant variation and sometimes there is autocorrelation existing in the time series. And these three elements will give highest R square. At the same time, it will not give T distribution. That is why some adjustment has to be made in the time series to minimize the effect of the not having a constant mean and the highest variation and also the serial correlation. So this is something about the general introduction of time series. Then coming to Today's presentation, I structured the presentation like this. We start from the meaning of time series. Example with some of the graphs. Types of time series sets, data sets. Types of time series analysis. And uh, what are the aims of time series analysis? And uh, I will show some time series graphs which shows the upward and downward movement and the components of time series and finally what is the concept of stationarity and I will not touch the complicated models like uh, Arma, Arima, Sarima, Garch, Arch, War and uh, co-integration models. So a conference or lecturing through online 
definitely demands this type of lecturing. So we start from the meaning of time series. So what is time series? The numerical data collected at regular time intervals. The sequence of numerical data obtained at regular time intervals. Here time is the independent variable and the values of a particular variable is the dependent variable. Or a set of data, that set of data depending on the time is called a time series. And in the time series, the data has been arranged chronologically. So time-based arrangement of data with regard to a particular variable. Or time series is used for forecasting. And in the forecasting, we use the historical values so that we can predict the future values. So the ultimate aim of the time series analysis is to predict the future value of a particular variable based on the previous value or historical values. And time series mainly occurs in different areas, economics, finance, environment or medicine. The time series data that can be collected from this area. And here are some of the examples of time series data. Number of babies born in each hour in our state, in our country, or in the world. So this is a particular type of time series. And daily closing price of a stock in a stock exchange for over the last 30 days, or for over the last six months, or for over the last one year. And GDP of the country measured each year. Definitely, it will give a time series. And here I want to explain types of data sets. Time series data I have already explained. Cross-sectional data and panel data. And it is very easy to analyze the cross-sectional data because we have a number of groups that can be created in the population and based on the data collected, we can analyze the impact of a variable according to different groups existing in the population. And what is the difference between time series, cross-section data, and panel data? As I have already mentioned, time series is a group of observation on a single entity. Say, for example, value of US dollar. For over the last 46 years, starting from 1971 up to 2016. So here we observe the value of a particular variable over a time. For example, daily closing price over one year for a single financial security. Or a single patient's heart rate measured every minute over a one hour. And what is the difference between time series and cross-section data? Cross-section is a group of observation of multiple entities at a single time. Say, for example, today's closing price of a particular share for 15 companies, sorry, 500 companies, or the heart rate of 100 patients at the beginning of the same procedure. So this is cross-section data. And there is a combination of time series and cross section, then such a data is called panel data. That means the data organized in both the dimension. That means time series and cross section, we combine these two data. Then we will have the panel data. So, for example, daily closing prices over one year for 500 companies. So, that is the difference between time series, cross section, and a panel data. And it is very easy to analyze the cross-section data by applying appropriate statistical method. But the analysis of time series data and panel data is something different. There are a lot of conditions and assumptions that has been validated before organizing the data for analysis. Again, there are two types of time series data sets. 
univariate time series and multivariate time series. And the univariate time series that refers to the set of observation over a time of a single variable. Already I have shown the US dollar value of US dollar for over the last 46 years. Here we have only one variable that can be changed according to the change of time. Time is the independent variable here and US dollar is the dependent variable here. But multivariate time series refers to set of observation over time of several variables. That means in addition to US dollar, we may have Japan currency. And what is the impact of the change of time on US dollar and also Japan currency? So we have two same series here in association with the time. So when we establish some relationship between these two time series, based on the change of time, this is called a multivariate time series, multivariate time series. Then uh, what are the aims of time series analysis? To describe the pattern of time series data, one of the aims. And fit the models and make forecasts. So based on the values in the time series, or historical values or present values, we predict or forecast the future value. And this is the main aim of time series analysis. And there is a question, what are the, what are time series data different from other data? Data are not independent. And the statistical theory relies on the data being independent and identically distributed. The statistical theory says that data must be independent, but here the time series, the data is not independent. There may be some dependency between the values of a particular variable according to the different time points. A large sample is not good, but long time series is not always the best. Series often change with the time, so bigger it is not always better. Then Time series analysis can be useful to see how a given variable changes over time. That is why I have already mentioned time is the independent variable and the quantitative figure based on a variable. The, the data collected at different points of time on a particular variable, that is a dependent variable. And time series analysis can also be used to examine how changes associated with the chosen data point compared to shift the other variable over the same time period. So that means there is a possibility of multivariate time series analysis. And what are users looking for in an economic time series? Important features of economic indicator series include direction. There may be some upward and downward movement on a particular point of time. So we want to examine or analyze the direction of a time series from one point to another. And there are certain turning points. And in addition, we want to see if the series is increasing or decreasing more slowly or faster than it was before. Sometimes we can find a slow movement or, or in faster movement with respect to a time series. And when should the time series analysis best be used? We may not assume the existence of a deterministic model given the behavior of the system considered. We can't apply a deterministic model in the time series. And in instances where deterministic factors are not readily available, the accuracy of the estimate can be compromised on the need. And we will consider only univariate time series. 
So here in my presentation, I will consider only univariate time series where we have one dependent variable and time is independent variable. And what are the uses of forecasting? What are the areas where forecasting is made by using the time series? Sometimes we want to predict a value for the long run, long term prediction, long term forecasting, which include more than five years. Especially in the area of research and development, plant location, product planning, these are the areas where we have the need for long term forecasting. But medium term forecasting is started from one season to two years. The areas where we need the medium term forecasting are aggregate planning, capacity planning, sales forecast. And short term, which include one day to less than one year, maybe one season especially for, for demand forecasting, staffing level, purchasing, inventory levels. So this is the time series. The exports of a particular product for over the last 10 years, starting from 1989 to 1998. The export, that is the X value, the dependent variable, in 1989, 44,320. 44, and in 1990, it is increased to 52.865. 1992, decreasing to 39.424. And in 1998, it shows an increase in rent. It was 74,626. So here the X value, the dependent variable, is the export. And the independent variable is the time. And in the x axis, there is time. And the y axis, there is the value of exports. So this is the plot we can generate from this data. See, this is a curve. And in 1988, 44,000 something. And it shows an increasing trend in 1990. Slight increase in 1992. And decrease in 1992, 1994, 1994, it has also an decreasing trend. Then increase to around 50,000 in 1994. And in 1998, it was increased to 75,000. So there is an upward and downward movement you can find in the time series data. So that is why we don't have a constant mean up to a particular time period or the variation is much higher here. No constant variation that can be found in a time series data. And see the plot below, it is a drawn from a data of monthly bookings for an airline. This is also an example of time series data. And it shows an increase in trend here. Sometimes there is upward and downward movement. Why there is upward and downward movement? And I will explain the impact of certain component on the time series later. And the importance of time series, I have already mentioned, understand the past behavior of a particular variable over different points of time, or what happened over the last years or months. Then based on the past values or historical values, we predict the future. So government wants to know the future of unemployment rate. The future values are to be predicted here. Percentage increase in cost of living. Then we ha may have a forecasting and predict the values. For companies to predict the demand for their product in future. So in all these areas, there is a need for forecasting based on the past values. 
again linear and non-linear time series data L times linear time series is one where e for each data point x that data point can be viewed as a linear combination of past or future values or differences that means the data past data and the time there is a linear combination of these two variables but non-linear time series are generated by non-linear dynamic equations that have futures that cannot be molded to be a linear process. There is no linearity in the time series. There is no linear time series. And how is time series data understood and used? There are some areas the time series data has been used, especially in the data mining signal processing and in econometrics or quantitative finance the time series analysis is very very important and again utility of time series to study the first behavior of data to forecast the future behavior based on the past behavior estimation of trade cycles maybe boom depression etc etc and comparison with the other time series, is there any dependency between two time series or more than two time series? Here this is a very, very important aspect. What are the components of time series? Why there is an upward and downward movement that can be seen in a time series? The upward and downward movement in a time series is basically the impact of these four components. Trend, season of variation, oscillation and random component. And I will explain each uh, component of time series one by one. So there are four components of time series. Trend, cyclical, seasonal and random. A study of time series aims at identifying the possible contributions of these effects and after eliminating these effects, the remaining series called the residual series taken for analysis. So I have already mentioned in a time series you can find upward and downward movement only because of the impact of these four components. Either trend, cyclical, seasonal or random. Sometimes there may be the combination of any two or sometimes there may be the combination of all the four. Due to such combination, there may be the possibility of getting an upward and downward trend. And if we minimize the impact of these components on a time series, then we may have a residual series and that can be used for predicting the future values. So time series is said to be an effect of these four components. The four components are trend, cyclical, seasonal and random. So the researcher has to choose two models by considering the impact of these three, these four components. The addictive model and the multiplying models. In the case of addictive model, yt, that means the impact of time on this dependent variable, time series variable, is the time associated with the trend plus the cyclical effect plus the oscillation effect plus the random effect or in the case of multiplying model yt is equal to tt into st into ot into rt these two are the models associated with the time series and the researcher can choose any one of the model And I, can, I will explain what is trend. Trend is the long time pattern of movements in the data, overall or persistent long term upward or downward movement. And the trend of a time series is not always linear. 
So in the time series, we may have upward movement and downward movement due to trends. And the seasonal variation, that means regular fluctuations that occur within a year. Examples, consumption of heating oil which is very high in winter, a particular season, and very low in other seasons of the year. And gasoline consumption which is very high in summer, when most people go on vacation. So during a particular season, we can see an upward movement in the time series data. But whenever the season is over, we can see the downward movement. Cyclical component, especially with regard to business cycle. Long time wave-like patterns. Regularly occur but may vary in length. Often measured peak to peak and trough to trough. And there may be some random component associated with the time series. The, uh, the random component means the unpredictable random residual. Due to random variations of nature, accidents, unusual events. There are certain unexpected events which clearly indicates the downward and upward movements. And possible causes of random components are unseasonable and there is a change in the weather condition, occurrence of some disasters, strikes, sometimes sampling and non-sampling error. These are the reason why there is unpredictable events that creates a change in the time series. See, this is an example of circular trend. Upward, downward, upward and downward. And this is the upward and downward movement due to the impact of seasonal variation. The second component of time series. See, what is the impact of cyclical variation on the time series? Peak moment, trough moment, between them contraction and trough to peak expansion. So there may be a wave-like movement which creates the upward and downward trend in the time series data. So random variation, the variation due to unexpected events. And how to eliminate this effect of the four components in the time series data so that we can have a constant mean, constant variation and minimize the autocorrelation. And one method is classical decomposition. Decompose the series into different components or various components. See, so this is the original series. And we can convert this series into this form by eliminating the impact of the components of time series. Maybe trend, seasonal variation, or oscillation, or random. This is another chart showing the variation. This is regular variation. And seasonally adjusted series. We eliminate the component of seasonal factor. Then we minimize the impact of trend here. Minimize the impact of regular variation here. So in order to minimize the impact of the four components of time series, there are basically two methods, moving average or exponential smoothing. And I will explain the moving average here. From the time series data, we can calculate the three-year moving average or five-year moving average. And what will happen when we calculate the three-year or five-year moving average corresponding to the time series data? 
So in the moving average, the equation is y1 plus y2 plus y3 divided by 3. Then y2 plus y3 plus y4 divided by 3. So this is the time period starting from 81 to 87. Progression of a particular commodity from 1981 to 1987. Time is independent variable and production of a particular commodity is a dependent variable. By applying the moving average, what will happen? See, the first three figure, three-year move, three moving average, 412, 438, and 446. We take all the values for the first three years. And the average is 432. Again, we select 438, 446, 454. The average is 446. Then 446, 454, and 470. The average is 457. So this is a way in which we can calculate the moving average based on the first three years, second three years, and third three years. See, this is the original plot. The plot based on the original value. Starting from 412, 438, 446, 454, 470, 483, and 490. So the curve is like this. Upward and downward movement you can see in the curve. But whenever we calculate the moving average based on the three year, here the moving average for the first three year, 432. Then the moving average for 1982 to 1884, 446 and so on. When we plot this moving average, definitely we will get a flat curve, flat series here, in which we have the constant mean, sometimes we have the constant variation. Normally, we can't find a constant mean and constant variation in the time series data. So in order to get the constant variation and constant mean, we have applied a moving average. Calculate the moving average, then plot this average in the graph. Then we have a flatter series. Then another method is least square method fitting a straight line trend y is equal to f plus bx. And this is a regression equation. But when we go for the application of regression, definitely we must check whether time series has a constant mean, constant variation, or is there any serial correlation or autocorrelation between the values at different points of time. So now comes to the stationarity. This is a very, very important for time series analysis. A stationary time series is a series where there are no changes in the underlying system. That means a series is said to be stationary. Definitely that particular series has a constant mean, which means no trend. Constant variation. We must have a constant variance. That means there is no heteroscedasticity. If the variation is very high, we found that there is heteroscedasticity element. And constant autocorrelation structure. And finally, no periodic component. That means no seasonality. So at the time of the application of some of the statistical method against time series data, you should ensure whether the data is stationary. Time series is stationary, which means the stationary time, sorry, the time series data 
has no constant means, constant variance, and the constant autocorrelation, and there is no seasonality component in the time series. Then only we can say that the time series is stationary. That means a stationary model is when there is consistency in data over a period. That means the statistical properties are constant in the time series. Then only we can say that the time series is stationary. And why is stationary is important? Stationarity is important. Most forecasting methods assume that distribution has stationarity. For example, autocovariance, autocorrelation rely on the assumption of stationarity. And absence of stationarity can cause unexpected or bizarre figure behaviors like T ratio not following T distribution. I have already mentioned. Then we will get an R square when we use non stationary data for modeling. And the values assigned to variables are not correlated at all. Therefore, stationary process has the property that the mean variation, autocorrelation structure do not change over time. We will have a constant mean variation and autocorrelation. And stationary can be defined in precise mathematical terms, but for our purpose, we mean a flat looking series. That means remove the impact of the four components in the time series. Without trend, constant variance over time, constant data correlation, structure over time, and no periodical fluctuation that is called seasonality. And if the series is consistently increasing over time, the sample mean and variance will grow with the size of sample, and they will always underestimate the mean and variance for future periods. That means if we use non stationary data for prediction definitely the non stationary data will give spurious regression meaningless regression for prediction and estimation so again defining a stationary time series it is the one where the mean the variance are both the constant over time in other words it is the one whose properties do not depend on the time at which the series is observed Therefore, the time series is a flat series. We need a flat series. Without run, with the constant variance over time, a constant mean, a constant autocorrelation, and no seasonality. That is why the time series should be a flat series. After eliminating the impact of so many components, we may have a residual series that is used for the model building and prediction. This makes a stationarity series easy to predict. See, the graph shows a constant mean here. Here, there is an upward and downward movement. At the same time, the mean value is constant. And constant variation here. Three charts. You just look at the three charts. Here the mean is stationary, almost the equal upward and downward movement. And variation is also similar. But here, non-stationary mean, meaning it's not constant. And stationary variance, variation is almost the same, but the mean value must be, must have certain variation here, high level of variation here. And here stationary mean and non-stationary variance. Then another important element, autocorrelation. Autocorrelation is a key concept in time series analysis. Autocorrelation is the correlation between a measurement at two different times. Second year value may be dependent on first value or correlated to first value. Or third year value may be correlated to second year value. So this is the presence of autocorrelation. And the time interval between values is called lag. So, for example, stock prices may be correlated from one day to the next with a lag value of one. Autocorrelation often results in a pattern where the time series without autocorrelation will exhibit randomness. Here, no autocorrelation. But he, this graph shows the data has autocorrelated. 
constant autocorrelation structure the Shashnati time series has constant autocorrelation structure throughout the entire series if the autocorrelation remains constant throughout the series a simple transformation can be used to remove the autocorrelation so if there is high level of autocorrelation found in the time series data how to reduce that autocorrelation and there are different methods for dealing the autocorrelation found in a particular time series And how to identify non-stationary time series data? There are several methods to identify non-stationary time series data. Run sequence plot. Summary statistics you can calculate. Based on the histogram plot, we can identify whether the data is stationary or non-stationary. Or applying ADF test augmented Dickey-Fuller test to find whether there is any stationarity or non-stationarity element in the time series. And run sequence plot, a run sequence plot is simply a plot of your time series data. And I have already presented some of the plots. See, the data, the time series data may be split up into three parts chunk one that means the part one part two and part three the mean value for the first part 19.8 mean value for the second plus 18.6 and mean value for the third part of the time series 18.5 so here we found no mean variation statistically because 19.8, 18.6 and 18.5. But considering the variance, 12.3, 13.1 and 12.8. And variation is also not found significant. So this is a stationary series of stationary time series. But considering this, mean value 19.8, 30.6, 49.5. So the mean value is not constant over time period. That is why the series is not stationary. And variance 12.3, 13.1 and 12.8 variance is constant here. But mean value is not constant. That is why the time series is said to be a non-stationary series. And here also the example of non-stationary series. Mean value 19.8, 18.6 and 18.5. We have almost more or less a constant mean here. But variance 11.8 for the first part of the time series, second part of the time series 40.6 and third part 41.3. That means there is an increasing trend. Maybe due to the seasonality component. So here the, we have different variations, variances here. So that is why the data is said to be non-stationary. And after considering the histogram plot, we can identify whether the series is stationary or non-stationary. Here this is the stationary series this is a histogram and based on the shape we can find that this particular time series is has stationary stationarity and uh, we have no histogram here therefore the data has no stationarity and finally the stationarity can be Tested by using augmented Dickey Fuller test, ADF test, and that can be applied by using different softwares like EViews and uh, Gretel. The augmented Dickey Fuller test is a hypothesis test that tests specifically, specifically for stationarity. 
That means we start a null hypothesis. We generally say that the series is non-stationary. The time series is non-stationary. If the p-value is less than 0.05. It is a less appropriate task to use with the small data sets or when heterocidacity is present. So by applying augmenter Dickey Fuller test, we can find whether a particular time series has stationarity or non-stationarity. And how to transform non-stationary time series data? Remove trend. Remove the way high level of variance, that means heteroscedasticity. Remove water correlation with the differencing, first value. And the second value, second value will be detected from the first value. That means differencing. Remove seasonality, that means re remove the effect of periodic component. And often you will have to do several of these on the one data set. Thank you. And if you have any queries, please ask. Hello, yes. Please. So uh, I have four questions. Good evening. Sorry. And I have four questions. How to check out a correlation? So auto correlation can be checked by using Durbin Watson test. When we apply regression against time series data, this particular value will come. And which shows there is whether there is any auto correlation existing in the time series or not. And please cite examples of linear variables and nonlinear variables. If a dependent variable is changing in association with the independent variable, there is a constant movement between these two. We can say that there is a linear relationship. But if we have no such a relationship in respect of a movement of two variables, dependent and independent variable, we may say that there is no linear relationship between these two variables. To what extent the predicted value is closer to the actual? I don't get that particular question. And what is the best method to check stationarity? Definitely the graph or histogram will tell you the presence of stationarity or non-stationarity in a better way than applying any other test like a ADF test.